working on my dissertation and I just haven't had time to make videos but I recently had a request for something and I thought since I was making it tonight anyway I would share it with you because it's super easy to make it's super delicious and it's something that stores really well so I'm going to show you how to make a cheesy sauce alternative anyway cheesy sauce alternative now I'm making this because I'm gonna be working almost every night this week and so I'm gonna put it inside mason jars and then my husband can make a quick nacho whenever he wants it seems like it has a lot of ingredients but it actually doesn't it just goes together really quickly so the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna mix I'm gonna make a huge batch of this, okay? So remember, this is a family-sized batch, and you can um, scale it down or scale it up, whatever works for your family. So I'm gonna put four cups of almond milk. Now this is kind of a higher, um, a higher fat content, but it's other than the almond milk, it's got no nuts. But you could use hemp milk, you could use rice milk, you could use soy milk, you could use any non-dairy sort of alternative milk. I have never tried it with like water or something. I don't think that would probably work, but maybe you could do half and half. So I'm gonna use four cups of that. Yum. Okay, then I'm going to use, oh, hold on one second, wrong measuring cup. Don't you love it when your kids empty the dishwasher and they don't put anything back where it goes? Anyway, I still can't find the right measuring cup, so I'm gonna use this one. So for every cup of milk you use, I'm gonna break it down a little for you so you can customize it. You're gonna use one third cup of nutritional yeast. And I don't know what's all over my peanut butter or something, but nutritional yeast, right? A terrible name. I've heard a couple people say that they want to um, sort of petition to change the name of nutritional yeast. I'm on board with that. Nutritional yeast sounds terrible and it tastes delicious. It's sort of nutty. It's a little cheesy tasting. Um, so I'm gonna let my stuff start getting heated up here. So I'm gonna turn it to about a medium heat. Okay, next, for every cup of milk, you're going to use a tablespoon and a half. So, a tablespoon and a half of cornstarch. So I'm using six. Okay. Then, for every cup of milk that you have, you're going to put in a table and a half, a tablespoon and a half of tomato paste. that I'm supposed to be talking. So, uh, <laughs> you don't want to see me be quiet. So this is a great cheese replacement. Um, it tastes really cheesy. Okay, and for every cup we're going to use half a teaspoon of garlic powder. It tastes really cheesy um, and nacho-y, sort of. It's great for nacho sauces. Um, I love it on potatoes. That's how we're going to eat it tonight. I like it on chips. Then we're also going to use half a teaspoon of cumin for every cup of milk. So I'm going to use two. Um, I like it on just about everything. I eat it on potatoes. I keep it in the fridge. It stores really well in the fridge for, I don't know, about a week. You can keep it stored in the fridge. Um, okay. Then we're gonna do paprika. It, this gives it that nice, um, helps it get its nice orangey color. So you're gonna do a quarter teaspoon per cup of milk. So 
I'm putting just a whole teaspoon in mine. And then here comes an area where you can customize it. Okay, so this is, it says cayenne on here, but I think it's just actually chili pepper in here. You can make this as spicy or as not spicy as you want. So I'm going to put in just a skosh, a teens, because I don't like mine to be too spicy. Okay, so once you've added all of that stuff in, then we're just going to kind of whisk it together until it's all nice and mixed together. This cooks up really fast. Um, I mean, it is fast once it starts going. So it's gonna start out as sort of this dull yellow color. And I'm gonna try and show that to you before it starts to turn. So let me get it sort of all whisked together. Okay. So I don't know if you can see. You know what? I'm going to just bring the camera over here. So it starts out, I don't know if that looks dull yellow to you, but it really is. It's like a dull yellow. It does not look cheesy. Now as it heats up and you're going to continue to whisk it, it is going to get more and more orange until the final product is a nice orangey sort of hue. So next, I'm gonna have to do, I never measure the mustard, okay? This is just a Dijon mustard, Kroger brand. Um, I never measure it, but I'm going to today for you guys. Oh, I'm almost out. I may not even be able to put as much as I normally do. Okay, well I can tell by the way this is shaping up. I normally add about a tablespoon for all of this. So I'm going to say a quarter tablespoon, whatever, however much that is. I used to have one of those little conversion charts that told you how much everything was in teaspoons and stuff. I just don't have it up here anymore. A quarter tablespoon for every cup of milk. Okay. Now I'm going to add in some secret ingredients. You are going to get the Heather secret ingredient. Secret ingredient number one, agave. You can use any sweetener you want. It's like the world hates me today, my camera cut out. Okay, so secret ingredient, agave. You don't have to use agave. I actually do not use agave in a single other recipe. So I'm gonna say about a quarter tablespoon per cup. Uh, maybe a little more, maybe half a tablespoon. Okay, so we're just gonna add that in, keep whisking away. Final secret ingredient. So you may be asking, how did you come up with this cheese sauce recipe? So I combined a bunch of cheese sauces. Um, I wanted something that was nut free and blender free, just so that my friends and family can make it. So lemon juice, the juice of one lemon. Oh my gosh, that's a really juicy lemon. Um, I'm only going to use half of it because that is the juiciest lemon ever. So juice of one lemon. Then we are just going to keep whisking. I'm going to turn it up a little bit. It helps if you get it up to sort of a boiling point. And then when it cools down, it will be nice and thick and orange. And I will show you that finished product when it's ready. Okay, so we, now we've got it all done and it's nice and thick and creamy and sort of cheesy looking. So I thought you might appreciate seeing how we serve it up at my house. So what I've got here is a nice plate of potatoes, just um, chopped up, roasted in the oven at 375 degrees with a little bit of no salt seasoning on them, no oil, no nothing. Then I'm going to take a helping spoonful of this cheesy sauce. And I'm just going to pour it over the top of the potatoes. That's what that looks like. Mmm. 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 Okay. Then I'm going to make kind of a little salad on top. So I'm going to put some lettuce. 
lettuce. Mm. A little lettuce for my mouth too. Some tomatoes. These tomatoes are amazing. They are locally grown organic tomatoes. They taste amazing. I'm also going to put some cucumber on here. I know that probably seems weird, but it's quite delicious. So then we put some cucumbers on top. I know that probably seems like a weird combination, but it's actually quite delicious. And then I'm going to put some green onions on top. And then the best part is we're going to put one more spoonful of cheesy sauce right over the top. And that, my friends, is a dinner with delicious cheesy sauce. So I hope you like this recipe. Let's try it. Mm, so good. Um, if you do, hit like below and subscribe to my video and I hope to be making some more videos for you soon. Until then, live, eat, and be well. Is it on? Are we recording video? Hmm? I don't know. Are you staring at my forehead wrinkles? Yes, you are. Wrinkle. I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and check out my Facebook page and website.